Hey guys, this is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR PharmaTube. In the previous video, we discussed an introduction to diuretics. If you did not watch the video, hit the i button on top right of this video to watch it. To watch the other topics of medicinal chemistry, click on the links given in the description below this video. Also, answer the questions given in the community tab. In this lesson, we shall learn the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors which are a class of diuretics and the drugs such as acetazolamide, methazolamide and dichlorphenamide. Carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme found in cells in the proximal tubule of the kidney, the eye and glial cells. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor is a drug that inhibits the activity of the carbonic anhydrase enzyme. In 1940, T. Munn and D. Keeling discovered that acidosis was produced on the administration of sulfonylamide drug. Acidosis is a condition in which pH in the blood drops below the normal pH that is 7.35. This acidosis was due to the inhibition of carbonic anhydrase enzyme by the sulfonylamide drug. The carbonic anhydrase enzyme is responsible for the conversion of carbon dioxide and water to hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. Normally, all the bicarbonate ions which enter the tubular urine that is glomerular filtrate are reabsorbed. This occurs by means of an exchange of hydrogen ions which the renal tubular cells secrete for sodium ions in the tubular urine. Inhibition of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase depresses hydrogen-sodium ion exchange leading to a more alkaline urine since larger amount of sodium and bicarbonate ions are excreted. Potassium ions are also excreted to a certain extent. This explained metabolic acidosis caused clinically by the sulfonylamide drug. W. B. Scratch reasoned that natriuretic effect of the sulfonamide should in turn facilitate water excretion. Natriuretic effect is the process of sodium excretion in urine through the action of the kidneys. He was also able to show that the diuretic effect of sulfonylamide was caused by its inhibition of carbonic anhydrase. However, excessive excretion of sodium and bicarbonate ions and concomitant acidosis rendered the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor ineffective for further diuretic action. Moreover, the amount of sulfonylamide necessary to produce diuretic effect was too high and caused toxic effects. H. A. Krebs reported that for inhibition of carbonic anhydrase, the sulfonamides should have unsubstituted sulfamoyl group. Mono and di substitution on the sulfamoyl group gives inactive compounds. The special relationship between carbonic acid and sulfamoyl inhibitor must be as shown in the figure. And it was also observed that for high carbonic anhydrase inhibition, the unsubstituted sulfamoyl group was attached to the aromatic group that is phenyl, naphthyl or a heterocycle. Before going further discussion with carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, it may be mentioned that carbonic anhydrase is also present in a number of intraocular structures including the ciliary processes which produce the high concentrations of bicarbonate in the aqueous humor. A carbonic anhydrase inhibitor reduces the rate of aqueous humor formation leading to reduction of intraocular pressure in patients with glaucoma. Robin and Clapp in 1950 prepared a large number of heterocyclic compounds containing a sulfamoyl group as a potential carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Out of these studies emerged the first commercial sulfonamide acetazolamide which was introduced in 1953. Further, structural changes made by the scientist Young and co-workers in 1956 provided a more potent carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that is methazolamide. The other carbonic anhydrase inhibitor of interest is dichlorphenamide which was developed in the Merck Sharp and Dogme labs. MSD scientists Sprague and Bayer took a note on the observations of Krebs that para-carboxybenzene sulfonamide was a potent inhibitor of carbonic anhydrase and started work on similar lines preparing benzene sulfonamides with different substituents on the benzene nucleus. This initially observed para-chlorobenzene sulfonamide to be active. 
Later, they turned to metabenzene disulfonamides and synthesized the disulfonamide as shown in the structure which was found to increase excretion of sodium chloride and bicarbonate ions in the experimental animals. Then, dichlorphenamide was prepared which had mode of action similar to acetazolamide but caused excretion of less bicarbonate and more chloride ions along with sodium ions. Dichlorphenamide has become to be used clinically as a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. It is the first discovery of significance among benzene disulfonamides, the class which was later to constitute cornerstone of modern diuretic therapy. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are divided into two major classes. Number one, natural sources and number two, Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are available in systemic and topical preparations. Elagitanins extracted from the pericops of Punica granatum, the pomegranate such as Punicalin, Punicalagin, Granatin B, Galagyl dilactone, Casuarinin, Pedunculagin and Telemangradin 1 are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors include Dorsalamide and Brinzolamide and systemic carbonic anhydrase inhibitors include acetazolamide, methazolamide and dichlorphenamide. Three carbonic anhydrase of clinical interest today are acetazolamide, methazolamide and dichlorphenamide. They have a limited usefulness as diuretics. They are used in the treatment of glaucoma and for the prevention of acute mountain sickness. Coming to the individual drugs, the first drug is acetazolamide. Acetazolamide came into medical use in 1952. Its IUPAC name is N5-sulfamoyl 134-thiodiazole-2-ile acetamide. It is both thiodiazole derivative and sulfonamide derivative with diuretic, anti-glaucoma and anti-convulsant properties. Having sulfonamide group in its structure, however, it does not have any clinically significant antimicrobial property. It is a non-competitive inhibitor of carbonic anhydrase enzyme. Acetazolamide is synthesized by the reaction of ammonium thiocyanide and hydrazine forming hydrazino n n bis thiourea which cyclizes into thiazole upon reaction with phosgene. Then thiazole acetylation with acetic anhydride gives 2 acetylamino 5 mercapto 134 thiodiazole. The obtained product is chlorinated to give 2 acetylamino 5 thio 134 thiodiazole 5 sulfonyl chloride, which is then converted into acetazolamide upon reaction with ammonia. Acetazolamide appears as white to yellowish white fine crystalline powder. It has no odor or taste. It is very slightly soluble in water. Its plasma half life is 3 to 6 hours. It is not metabolized and is excreted unchanged in the urine. Acetazolamide is a non-competitive inhibitor of carbonic anhydrase enzyme. Inhibition of this enzyme in the kidney prevents excretion of hydrogen leading to increased bicarbonate and cation excretion and increased urinary volume which results in an alkaline diuresis. Acetazolamide reduces the concentration of bicarbonate, resulting in a decreased synthesis of aqueous humor in the eye, thereby lowering the intraocular pressure. Although its mechanism of action is unknown, it has anticonvulsant properties resulting from indirect effects secondary to metabolic acidosis or direct effects on the neuronal transmission. It also produces respiratory stimulant effects in response to changes to both carbon dioxide and oxygen tension levels within the lungs. Acetazolamide is sold under the trade name Diamox. It is a medication used to treat glaucoma, epilepsy, altitude sickness, periodic paralysis, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, and heart failure. It may be used long term for the treatment of open angle glaucoma and short term for acute angle closure glaucoma until surgery can be carried out. It is taken by mouth or injection into a vein. The second drug is methazolamide. Similar to acetazolamide, methazolamide is also a thiodiazole derivative and a sulfonamide derivative. 
it is a close structural analog of acetazolamide in which one of the active hydrogens in the thiadiazole ring has been replaced by a methyl group. This methyl group decreases polarity of the compound and permits a greater penetration into the ocular fluid where it acts as a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor reducing intraocular pressure. It has a weak and transient diuretic effect, therefore use results in an increase in urinary volume with excretion of sodium, potassium and chloride ions. Methazolamide is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor with potential antineoplastic activity. Methazolamide is synthesized by an intermediate product of acetazolamide synthesis that is 2-acetylamino-5-mercapto-1,3,4-thiadiazole. This is then benzylated with benzyl chloride at the mercapto group forming 2-acetylamino-5-benzyl-thio-1,3,4-thiadiazole. Further methylation of the product with methyl iodide leads to the formation of N4-methyl-2-benzyl-thio-1,3,4-thiadiazole-5-ylidine acetamide. Oxidation and simultaneous chlorination of the resulting product with chlorine in an aqueous solution of acetic acid and reacting the resulting chlorosulfonic acid derivative with ammonia gives methazolamide. Methazolamide's mechanism of action is quite similar to that of acetazolamide. It is a sulfonamide derivative and a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor with potential antineoplastic activity. It inhibits tumor-associated carbonic anhydrase which may result in increased cell death in hypoxic tumors. Hypoxia is a condition in which the body or the region of the body is deprived of adequate oxygen supply at the tissue level. As a hypoxia-inducible transmembrane glycoprotein, carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the rapid interconversion of carbon dioxide and water into carbonic acid, protons and bicarbonate ions helping to maintain acidification of the tumor microenvironment and enhance resistance to cytotoxic therapy in some hypoxic tumors. Methazolamide is a potent topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and is sold under the trade name Neptazane. It is indicated in the treatment of increased intraocular pressure in chronic open angle glaucoma and secondary glaucoma. Also, it is used preoperatively in acute angle closure that is a narrow angle glaucoma where lowering the intraocular pressure is desired before surgery. And the last drug of this lesson is dichlorphenamide. Dichlorphenamide was approved in the US in 1958. Its IUPAC name is 4,5-dichlorobenzene-1,3-disulfonamide. It is a benzene-1,3-disulfonamide in which the hydrogens at positions 4 and 5 are substituted by chlorine. Dichlorphenamide is chemically a sulfonamide and a dichlorobenzene. It has a role as a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, an anti-glaucoma drug and an ophthalmology drug. Disulfonamide is synthesized in a relatively simple way from 2-chlorophenol. 2-chlorophenol undergoes sulfochlorination by chlorosulfonic acid forming 4-hydroxy-5-chlorobenzene-1,3-disulfonyl chloride. The hydroxy group is replaced by a chlorine atom using phosphorus pentachloride giving 4-5-dichlorobenzene-1,3-disulfonyl chloride. The reaction of which with liquid ammonia gives the desired dichlorphenamide. Dichlorphenamide acts by partially suppressing the secretion or inflow of aqueous humor in the eye and so reduces intraocular pressure. It is sold under the name Daranite. It is an oral carbonic anhydrase inhibitor used in the treatment of glaucoma. It was found effective in cases of therapy-resistant epilepsy. As an orphan drug, it is used for the treatment of primary hypokalemic and hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That's all in this video, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, a type of diuretic drugs. In the next lesson, we will discuss the thiazide type of diuretics. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.